If you are a single guy, here are the five worst cities for dating. This is based on my personal experience coaching hundreds of clients. Coming in at number five, San Diego, California, AKA Man Diego. They've got a, a military base there that trains the Navy SEALs. So not only are there a lot of guys, there are a lot of guys that are in shape. To be fair, San Diego has some beautiful women. The majority of San Diego spreads out between downtown to PB. After living there for about five years, I love the weather. The people are generally pretty nice, okay? But if you're out to compete for girls, if you're going out at night, there's really nowhere else to go except downtown and PB. And PB, it's a very beach, you know, white boy kind of vibe. Downtown, you've got some more sophisticated lounges and bars. But if you're trying to meet girls at nighttime, uh, it can be extremely hard if you don't know the right people or if you're not a white guy. In my opinion, as an Asian guy who, you know, I would consider myself above average looking a little bit, even I had trouble at nighttime when I didn't know anyone. Now, if you get yourself some friends that are culturally diverse, you start building a social circle. San Diego is a very small town. You'll start to meet the same people over and over again. If you move to New York after graduating, uh, there's a whole finance sector. There's a big professional networking thing. Even in LA, people that you know are immigrants uh, who graduate from college, there's a certain vibe of like, okay, we're in the big city. We're trying to make it. San Diego, kind of a sleepy town, not much going on. And what I found living there for over five years, even though I loved it, was that the trip that I brought to the table, you know, I thought I was above average intelligence. I thought I was somewhat cultured, well-traveled. The girls I met there didn't care about that. All they wanted to do was to date a hot military guy or date that surfer dude, especially the younger, hotter girls um, when I was trying to date in my 20s. I did also feel like not a super high level of racism, but there was definitely like a more preference towards non-Asian guys. Overall, San Diego has really high quality women in terms of physical looks. You're not gonna find the best lawyers, best doctors, you know, girls that are really, really smart in San Diego, but they're sporty, they're fit, and they tend to generally like white guys, although there are always exceptions to the rule. Of course, I've dated some amazing girls from San Diego. One of them grew up there. Another one came from the Midwest. You can always do well if you know what you're doing. I would say for most single men, because of the ratio, the market supply of high value, quote unquote, like buff, military, hardcore guys, it's not the best place for dating if you're single. Okay, number four worst city to date is Seattle. I have many clients in Seattle. And what I hear and what I see from their experiences is that number one, it's very, very liberal, almost to the point where it's unhealthy. You have a lot of feminists, which is not a bad thing, but they tend to go a little bit to the edge politically. And Seattle is a tech center, so it's got really bad ratios. So you've got bad ratios. There isn't social pressure to be super fashionable, and they tend to push the envelope on feminist values to the point where it's almost breaking apart from traditional feminine values that a, man, a lot of men like. It's cold. It's rainy. You know, I know people that go to Seattle because they got a job at Microsoft, Amazon, right? But unless your job takes you there, Seattle is one of the worst places for dating for single men. Quick story. I had a client who lived in Seattle. He was working for a big tech company and he was about to give up. I was coaching him and he's like, you know, Giovanni, I just don't think this will work out. He said, you don't have a chance to go to New York because my company is headquartered there. And I said, go to New York and just take the actions that we've been working on together for one month. And he moved to New York. And what happened was immediately he saw a difference in the supply and demand. He saw girls actually reacting to him positively. And uh, after three months, he was like, thank you so much. I, I found a girlfriend. Our coaching sessions involved me talking through him through the decision whether or not he wanted to be in a relationship. Okay, and that would have been really hard for him to do in Seattle, or it would have taken much longer. Coming in at number three, okay, is the Virginia slash DC area. Washington DC is the political center of the United States, people in the government, However, that particular area, there's just a lot of older folks, married folks. And what happens is a lot of people that either went to school there or worked there, they, they want to move to like New York, you know, where things are more happening. Coming in at number two is San Francisco. I used to love San Francisco. There's so many movies I watched growing up based in San Francisco. Like I, I used to imagine San Francisco as like this magical city of love. And I lived in the Bay Area for about seven years. I can tell you that San Francisco used to be great, but now, these days, it's a ghost town. All the shops have closed down. All the international traffic kind of stopped. San Francisco has better ratios than say San Jose or Man Jose, but it's not what it used to be. The magic is gone. It's kind of sad. 
even back in the day when things were happening, still the ratio wasn't good. And some of the best girls that I met in San Francisco actually were all pairs or they were visiting as tourists. As you get into the South Bay, the ratio just dis gets destroyed. There's just like so many guys compared to a girl. And I know this sounds bad, but we used to call them 49ers, fours who think they're nines, because there was just so much demand from all the geeky engineers trying to get one girl out. And the girls just over time became really, really entitled. Unless you can afford rent in SF, or if your work is there, I don't recommend it for dating, okay? It's so expensive, you will have better dating prospects in LA, Miami, even New York, which has comparable rent to San Francisco. Coming in at number one, worst place to date for single men, Sunnyvale, California. I lived there for a couple of years. Uh, Google headquarters is close by, and I can tell you it has the worst ratios i think in the world <laughs> at least in the states all programmers a lot of indians and asian people which is fine but the problem is you would go to like a farmer's market and it would be like 70 percent men okay and the women were all married to them or taken or unavailable i literally remember having to walk around for like three hours just to see one girl who, who looked like she might be single you know all afternoon it was really bad man there are no bars you can go to. There's like one bar in Mountain View, like maybe two bars, and they're like pretty bad. There's one bar in Palo Alto, which is close to Stanford. Oh man, I had to drive to San Francisco just to be able to find girls that were attractive, that were my age. If you can, at all costs, avoid the South Bay, okay? If you have to, maybe find a place near closer to San Francisco. But yeah, one of the worst places ever. This list is US-centric, for sure. I've lived in the US for over 25 years. I have a lot of experience in a lot of the major cities there. If you have a better list, let me know. I would love to hear it worldwide if there are other places. I think US overall is a thin market for finding beautiful women who are, have traditional values and are highly, highly educated and are curious about the world, okay, have a world view. Um, with the exception of maybe parts of LA and New York and Boston. What I am starting to find is that the US is great for entrepreneurship, for meeting people that are just go-getters, you know, want to compete. But it's not ideal if you want to find like that traditional girl who's very smart, who has feminine values who's also, um, you know, quite attractive and there's a thick market. And what that means is there's a lot of them to go around. You don't have to fight off like 10, 50 guys for just that one girl who's super attractive and super smart. And if you want me to make a video about that, I, I think I will in the future about where to go instead. Wherever you are now, if you want more help with your dating life, check out the free resources in the description and I'll see you in the next one.